Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I think we saw the highlight of this, which is the, the launch of the national payment system. And I want to congratulate uh, the governor and the central bank, the, all the people that worked on it uh, for, for, uh, for the launch. I'm very happy to be here in uh, Pakistan and here specifically in Karachi and at the State Bank of Pakistan. Uh, I want to thank the governor for a very pleasant lunch. We had a good conversation uh, on, uh, on the digital payment system. Uh, and I'd like to congratulate again everyone for, uh, for the launch. To, I'll give you some background and then talk in more general points. Traditionally, financial improvements uh, in, in, uh, and in, in financial inclusion in Pakistan have been gradual. Um, the, the account ownership increased from 10% to 21% of adults during 2011 through 2017. During that same period of time, account ownership in Indonesia grew from 20% to 51%, uh, and in India grew from 35% to 80%. Um, additionally, there are gaps uh, of various sorts in uh, Pakistan. The usage uh, has still not reached the critical mass needed to shift consumer behaviors. Di for example, digital transactions are at less than one transaction per person per year, compared with Indonesia at 7.6. Um, this means there's potential, great potential, to be unlocked in Pakistan. And the launch today is an important step. So congratulations. Um, it's coming, the launch, I think, and the, the movement, this effort by the central bank is coming at a good time uh, because there's been time to stabilize after, after the uh, start of the new uh, administration. And that stabilization will, I think, facilitate growth uh, going forward. And so there's been, there's been uh, challenges as this is, has happened, but the central bank's been able to, uh, to stop the, or to, to separate the, from fiscal policy, the, mon the monetary policy and the monetization that had been occurring. That's a very important step. And the, the rupee has, uh, has, stab has, has uh, become a flexible currency and has uh, operated pretty well during the stabilization phase. And this is, I think, key in setting the stage for, the, for, for progress ahead. So it's coming at a good uh, at at a good time to launch uh, a a uh, deeper digital payment system. Um, the 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 system can be I think easy to use, affordable, and interoperable, um, and create solutions for individuals and for businesses. I was pleased with the presentation uh, because I heard quite a few deadlines. You know, this is something that's happening now, and I think that's very important. So as we look at it, uh, I hope that the state bank can implement the micropayment gateway uh, with, uh, with the private sector maybe within six months. It, this, is, this is a real-time uh, kind, of, kind of launch. And we've also uh, looked at and encouraged the National Database and Registration Authority, the NAD, NADRA, uh, to make, uh, make verification costs minimal and open. That will facilitate this process. And also the Pakistan Telecommunications Authority can allow for interoperability through the USSD channels. And again, this is happening, uh, we, we hope, real time as, we're, as, as this launch is going forward. So overall, the regulatory framework uh, can be open, allow for interoperability, and foster innovation. For the, uh, for the banks, banks and telecommunications companies and fintech businesses should collaborate to increase the number of formal individuals and businesses using the system. The system becomes more powerful, more effective as more people use it. And this means working collaboratively on innovation, interoperability and increasing access points. So we saw some of that on the slides. Um, and the upside 
uh, is something that we didn't hear very much about, but I'll, I'll try to give a crack at it. If this can be done, uh, it, it allows faster growth because it brings into the, into the financial system many more players. The cost of transactions goes down. That's very important and I think easy to underestimate how powerful that is. As the cost of transactions go down, it levels the playing field between genders. So women and men are on the on the on, are are a, both able to access the system. It allows small businesses to uh, uh, to engage, to meet their customers, to meet their suppliers. Uh, it it can allow remittances, which can be a powerful source of financing. There's the safety angle and the efficiency and effectiveness angle that can all be uh, all be created with this system. Um, so it, uh, I, I, I think it's a good opportunity to say that the State Bank of Pakistan has played the role of putting this together, and so I think it's uh, it's a good uh, a good concept that can continue because part of making this a success will be listening to all of the players and trying to forge a way forward that's collaborative. Um, so th I, I do want to take a minute on the World Bank's role. Um, the World Bank has been a leading, um, uh, leading in the global push for digital financial inclusion. And in Pakistan, I'm very pleased to have my uh, very strong team here. And we've said to the governor, the governor can call me, the governor can call people of our team, his staff can call our team because we want to make we want to help make this work. This is important for for Pakistan and it's uh, um, uh, uh, to to and we're we're able we're, we we uh, are are uh, we have the resources and the and the drive the energy to help implement or to help provide assistance as as uh, as you implement the uh, national payment system strategy. Um, so I want to thank uh, uh, Jela Ilango Hart, who are here and can always be uh, uh, available to discuss how to make this system a success. So with that, uh, thank you very much, Governor, for a fine lunch, and congratulations on the launch of, uh, of this system that can bring so many benefits. Thank you.